Hello, everybody. We are on. Yes, we are. We are two girls from the Silicon Valley. And before we introduce ourselves, we want to set the scene right for those of you who might not be familiar with the Silicon Valley. Yes, there yeah, we go. And great. we need sound. What time are you guys doing that? I could listen in. I don't know. He asked if he could pitch me. And I said, sure. And then he kind of just like kept talking for a while. Oh, you don't think that could have been the pitch, do you? God damn it, what did he say? Jeez, I kind of zoned out. Shit. Fives? Uh, go fish. Wait, I don't know if this would be relevant, but he did say the word Oculus a whole bunch. Wait, Oculus? Mm hmm? Oh my god. It's a VR play. That's the frothiest space in the valley right now. Nobody understands it, but everybody wants in. Any idiot can walk into a fucking room utter the letters V and R, and VCs will hurl bricks of cash at him. Then by the time they find out that it's vaporware, it's too late. I have got to get in on this. So we're in agreement. For a 10% stake in your current venture, you So how do you get into this space? And I don't agree that it's vaporware. <laughs> at least I hope it's not. So how do you get into this space, and what do we do there? We are Dart17. We're a testing lab for interactive experiences, objects, things, and tools. Anything that is interactive is what interests us. And we are, as I mentioned, from San Francisco. So I'm Ariana. I work for Swisscom as an AR VR evangelist and a business developer in the Valley. And with me is Sophie. Yeah, my name is Sophie. I'm associate director at Swissnext in San Francisco, which is like the innovation office of Switzerland in San Francisco. And then we have Michelle also uh, in our team, and she's based here in Switzerland. So if people have questions within Switzerland, they can direct it to her. That's right. And I'll let you tell us why we're here. So we realized that the creative economy needs more space for experimentation than a standard incubator. In San Francisco, there are over 170 incubators, and many of them have a very strict business model. It's fast commercialization, fast exit, fast money. And we believe that especially people with the more artistic or creative background that you know, are in the VR space and so forth uh, need a bit more time to experiment, to try out things, and to really come up with an idea that rethinks the potential of a medium or shows where a new technology could go. And that's why we started this testing lab. Uh, the idea came because of a few projects that we brought over that all of you probably know here. Um, this is a famous example. It's Birdly from the Zurich University of the Arts. When, they, when we invited them to San Francisco, it was a, an art school research project. It was really more around, like, can we create an experience that feels like flying like a bird? It was never the idea of selling a game or making this into a product. And they came to San Francisco. This is our gallery space. And uh, already the first day, like Wired came, and then Oculus came, the Google teams came. And all these teams came to them and was like, OK, can we buy it? Can we work together? How are we going to set this up? And the guys, to be honest, were a little overwhelmed because they didn't even think of that. And so we realized that there is a quite a big difference uh, of approaches uh, in Europe, and especially also in Switzerland and in San Francisco, where quickly people are thinking of the market and the market potential. But I think bringing these two approaches together is very interesting. Another example that is here right now as well, uh, Art Anim. Uh, they have this Dreamscape demo uh, in the other building. I haven't had a chance to try it yet, but I know their first their first pro uh, prototype they did um, was together also with Kensan. It was called Real Virtuality. We showed it also in San Francisco. It got picked up by Sundance. And that's how they met Steven Spielberg and the whole crew and now have uh, a big project going on in LA that will be the, the first kind of like immersive geolocation social VR space. And it will be a technology from Switzerland. And so what we're proposing is it's called Dart17, and we really call it a testing lab. So we're open to projects that are also just in an idea phase, in a prototype phase. Um, you need to have something that we can test, but it doesn't need to be a startup yet. It could still be uh, out of a university project. It could still be out of a collaboration, or it could be completely outside of the sector. It could also be that it is already a startup, and people want to try and see if, if they can scale it or go into another sector. 
So it's called DART, Design Art Research Technology, and that's also the people we're inviting to participate. It can be interdisciplinary teams, it can be all one in one person, um, so we're open to that. But the goal is really that we're finding these interdisciplinary projects because we believe that's where the most interesting and new ideas develop. Um, so I said it, interdisciplinary teams, uh, and it's all around interaction. So interactive experiences, we call it tools, objects, anything. So we're interested in finding projects that rethink how we interact with technology. It could be VR, we're here now at a VR conference, but it could also be a smart object or something for autonomous cars. It could be anything. We're, we're really open as long as the approach is creative and it's somehow around interaction. Um, what we offer, uh, it's a beautiful space in San Francisco. Um, it, uh, I think Ariana will show some pictures afterwards. Um, it's in the middle of the city. Uh, we have a little bit of a grant for each project, so about $5,000, so you can fly over and kind of survive for a month or two. And uh, of course, we have workstations for people to work. And then we have us, which <laughs> is us being there, living there, having a network in the space, being able to introduce you to the right people that can really give you feedback to your project. So the idea is that really you can get uh, industry feedback within a few weeks. And that's the advantage of the location San Francisco is because you have most of the big technology companies based there, so you can get feedback much faster. And on top of it, I think it's also a different culture. Uh, people do give you a feedback and they immediately tell you, oh, I see business opportunity here, or they just walk away and then you realize they're not interested. So it's a good place to test an idea. And then we do events, we take you along when we, when we invite people, we, we do specific demo days. So anything that's, that's necessary, very specialized to your project. Um, application is easy. Uh, you just go on the website, dart17.com. It's a rolling application, so there's no deadline or anything. Just whenever you're ready, make the application, and then we have a Skype call and figure out what's the best timing. Uh, it's simple, we want a little video pitch, a project description, a little bit about your team, and a little bit what you want to achieve in San Francisco. Um, we have a big network of mentors and friends, and some of them are actually here this a weekend. Lot <laughs> a lot of them, uh, a lot of people in the VR space as well. Uh, Shari, for example, Frito from Sundance, who is here in the jury. There are also people from the VR forum itself. You have people from the industry, Swisscom here locally in, in Switzerland, but then also people like Aaron Koblin, who have been doing like VR uh, as pioneers very early on, people who work at Oculus, people who are more like coming from the artistic side, film festival, so it's a really interdisciplinary group as well. And so depending on your project, we will go out and find the right mentor for, for your project that can give you feedback. Yeah, I'll pass it on to you. Um, so I mentioned that I work for Swisscom and I live in San Francisco. How many of you here are Swiss or live in Switzerland? Hands up. A few. So most of you are probably surprised. I get the question a lot, what are you doing in San Francisco? Because Swisscom is actually exclusive to the Swiss market. Uh, and we've been there since 1998 because, as, as Sophie already described a little bit, we also noticed that things are happening a little bit differently. And I've, I've lived there for a year now in this position, and I feel like it's been at least three years because the world spins faster. You talk to somebody one day, you'll have a follow-up meeting the next day, you'll be working on a prototype or some wireframing the next week. And I'm used to, hey, let's all talk about it, then let's talk about it some more, then let's assign somebody who will do a plan, then we're going to go over that plan. So a very, very different culture, much, much, much faster, much more rough, and um, a, a, a tiny space with a, a ginormous amount of diversity. And um, no matter where you stand in your project, the, the, the ecosystem can pick you up and, and help guide you in the right direction. And that's why we believe that San Francisco is a, San Francisco is a special place. Besides that all the technology companies are there and that with LA we're, we're having a, a space bloom where the content is coming out of, that being there and being able to advance there I, we think is a big benefit. And uh, we don't want to just talk about that space, we also wanted to show it quickly so maybe we can um, start the website that used to be our old website used to be a video. We were working with a startup and uh, now we have a new website but the video is still on there and it's just a tour um, through the space. 
And if not, it's a, it's a Swiss startup who developed that uh, interactive tool as well called yes, Teleport. They're, they're called Teleport. They're sitting in the valley right now um, at 500 startups, I believe. And uh, they've made a really cool tool where videos become interactive. And we used to have overlays. Our entire, all the information on our, from our website used to be overlaid as, as you toured the space. Um, what is really special about this place, we call it the Swiss Pier. There's over 80 coworkers that work out of this area. Um, us, Swisscom, as a large corporate, are there. Nestle is there. But then started Swiss startups like Teleport are there. Uh, there this is just, a, again, a, a replication of San Francisco at, at, at the, in many formats and uh, really easy to make connections, Swiss or, or otherwise. So what is interesting, I think, also about the space is that we're trying to bring all these different people together. So it's like you have somebody from a big corporate like Nestle or Swisscom sitting next to a startup or sitting next to a designer or artist. And then we have a lot of events. We also have a gallery space. We can do demos there. And it's also a way for us to bring people in. And the more people we bring in, the more people you're going to meet and the bigger is your network is going to be and the faster you get feedback. So we, now can, click. we wanted to give some examples of the work we've done so far. So we started um, at the beginning of the year. It was our first uh, call for action where we were looking for projects and selected the first two. Uh, it's Ape Lab and Struct, both um, Swiss startups that we took to South by Southwest this year, not, not last year. It's, it's an old picture. Um, but what we did is we took two projects that we accepted into Dart, um, plus uh, three other ones, three Swiss startups that we felt could benefit from, from some connections there. And then we feverishly went through their social database, trying to identify all people that could be relevant for our projects and hunting them down so they would sit down with our projects in, at South by Southwest in Austin, which worked amazingly well. If anybody has been at South by, you will know that it's huge. It's difficult to find each other. There's so many things going on. Um, so we were really proud that we were, we were able to pull it off and find some good people that were relevant for our projects. Um, so Struct is the first one, or one of the first ones that we accepted. They have a platform uh, that allow anybody to make their, create their own game. So those are two gamers that were very frustrated with how tedious it was to create those experiences and wanted to democratize that. And the second one is Ape Lab, uh, who has a similar, uh, is doing something similar. They started creating wonderful interactive VR content. Um, and we're also frustrated with how tedious it is and how inefficient and expensive and how long it takes. So they decided to democratize and allow anybody to create a VR experience or interactive VR experience without a line of code. And this is Emily. She's the CEO of Ape Lab. We shot this last week because she's currently in our space in San Francisco. And we'll let her tell you what it means to be part of yeah. that. Basically, she's saying in that short video that one thing she says is she met more people in the three weeks in San Francisco than in the entire three years she was working out of Switzerland. Um, it's just because the whole industry is there. And as we said before, uh, people are, are giving you feedback. And she was really able to go pretty high up in the last two months. She was pitching to the to the CEO of HTC. She was pitching to all the VCs related to HTC. Um, she was speaking at the Unity conference. She got funded by Oculus for one of their projects with, I think, almost $200,000 um, for, their, for their new uh, Samsung gear with the controllers. So a lot of things have happened uh, since she is there. Um, She's also hoping now to close a, uh, her, her seed round. And uh, so we're helping her continuously, introducing her to VCs. She has already quite an established network. But it's just being here, having our network that she can share, but also having the space where she can invite those people, where she can demo the thing. She has a beautiful office. She, she has an address uh, that already makes, makes a big difference. And uh, if you know Emily, you, you can speak to her directly. And I think she was here also this weekend. No? Or she was thinking of coming, maybe. I, I thought so. Yeah, so basically, uh, to sum it up, uh, we are in a pilot year. So mm -hmm. we have money for eight projects, six to eight projects this year. We already chosen one. So that means we have another four to six spaces. 
uh, available. Um, we're focusing on Swiss projects, but not entirely, so it's open internationally, so we could at least fit one or two European or, or, or international projects, that would be great, but it's mostly a call for the Swiss to, to send us ideas. It can be early, as we said, it needs, it needs be, be a first prototype, uh, but it can also be something that we start having a conversation and then see, oh, maybe it's not quite right yet, maybe come again in 2018, it's really something where we, where we can talk about. And uh, we're not doing this by ourselves. Uh, we have really good uh, partners that supported this idea from the very beginning on. Uh, one of them is Proelvetia, the Swiss Arts Council. Um, we have been working very closely with them to bring all the projects that I mentioned before, from Berkeley and Artamina and so forth, to the US. So it made also sense that we take it a step further and also really start incubating those projects rather than just showcasing them. Then there is Engagement Migro. Uh, they do a really great job also on, around these matchmakings on big events. So we work with them for SAS by SAS West. Next week they're taking projects to come. So that's a really good collaboration as well. And then there is Kepertruf uh, as a foundation in, in, in Basel. And yeah, Swiss Next and Swisscom. Yeah. And this is our website. Uh, this is uh, our contacts, and we're also here uh, today till the evening and tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So if you guys have questions or comments or ideas, come to us, come see us. And uh, last comment on, on the entry video, it's not as easy as they made it look. <laughs> they don't hurl bricks of cash at you when you mention VR, at least not when it's about content. <laughs> All right, thank yeah. you very much. Thank you. Thank you.